If you've ever wondered what it would be like to deflask tissue culture plants in your house with zero knowledge of what you're doing, this is the place for you to be. I'm kidding, I do have some research behind me now, but it's pretty minimal, so, you know, this is the first time I'm trying this, here goes nothing. Hey, planty people, this is Nick from Propist. I'm here back at you with a completely different video today. Today, we're gonna to be doing some tissue culture deflasking. I have for you today an interesting challenge. I'm going to deflask six plants that are currently in tissue culture. This should be interesting. I've never done this before, so doing it on camera is a challenge, but at least it keeps me organized. So let's start off by maybe talking about all the different equipment I've got here, and then we can walk into the actual process itself. All right, so a quick background story on where I got these from. There's a group here where I live in Vancouver, Canada called the Anthuriums Canada Group. There's another YVR houseplant group. In both cases, there's some folks who do sell tissue culture plants there. You can purchase them. It's a bit of an import with a middle person type of scenario in most cases. And, you know, having no contacts of my own to be able to do this kind of import, it's easier just to use the middle person. I figured, what the hell, I'm gonna try it out. It's the first time I'm doing this. I've done my due diligence by doing some research online and watching a bunch of YouTube videos, which is probably not the greatest source of knowledge. So I thought I would add to the collection of poorly researched YouTube videos and show you my process for this. I'm going to hopefully do this more than once. I think I have uh, potentially another order that's happening in a month or two. We will see if maybe I can improve this process as we go along. I thought I'd document it for you, get it going, see how things work out. And by the time the second order rolls around, I can compare and contrast and see if I did things right. And if I need to, I'll record another video to kind of like supersede this one. Let me just give you a quick rundown of what's here. I have five philodendron red andersons. For a little background, the red anderson is a hybrid between the philodendron pink princess and the white knight, I believe. Uh, I'll double check, but I'm pretty sure that's what it is. I'll show you a picture of what a mature one looks like. Here's one of the better ones that's in the flask currently. You can see it looks pretty good. There's already a little bit of variegation starting on one of the taller leaf there. Uh, I'll give you a close up of what these guys look like once I open up the individual flasks as well. My other plant here that I have is, <laughs> is a Monstera mint that is really not happy. It did come in this plastic package. I'm not entirely sure whether this was originally in a glass flask and then was transferred into this. And I'm not entirely sure what the media is because it's a lot runnier than the agar that's in these flasks. So what I'm thinking is this is water or something along those lines because it's a, I've got a leaf that's completely rotted out already. There was already one that was pretty much gone by the time I got it. And the third leaf in here is surrounded by bad conditions. So, and it's starting to look a little translucent. So I think it's probably time to get it out of Dodge as fast as possible here and hope that I can sell the, the stem and whatever roots might be in there, along with that one leaf that looks like it's still okay. I'll get a better look when I get it out. Last but not least, this is a TC Philodendron Caramel Marble, which is a hybrid of the Philodendron Serratum. I will give you a, a close up. This guy's already been deflasked. Got this all from the same vendor uh, in the Anthuriums Canada group. Pretty trusted seller in the area. So I, I did definitely did take too long to get these out of their existing environments. So a lot of this is on me for sure. One of them already had some mold growing on it. I'll give you a little zoom look. I think this is probably the one where the mold was on to begin with. This one already had some growing when I got it, which, you know, maybe not the greatest sign. This guy I only noticed today because I was kind of pulling it out and it looks like it's got some white fungus or mold growing on the inside center area there. So it's probably a good idea to get those out right away. The other three here don't have anything going on that I can tell. Let me go through the rest of my equipment here real quick and then we can start deflasking is what I've seen it referred to online. So we'll get started with that shortly. This guy I don't need to deflask, but I will put him into the same or some similar substrate to what I'm putting these guys into. First off, if you're curious what this is and you can kind of tell at the top there, this is reasonably fine grain perlite at the bottom. Uh, although it's a little chunkier than the outdoor stuff you can buy. And this is fluval stratum. And I have no idea if I'm pronouncing stratum or stratum, right? I'm gonna go with stratum and let's just hope that's what it is. Um, somebody please do correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. Uh, it's about half and half. I was told that's a good combination for uh, deflasking and for putting these guys in. So I'm gonna mix it in a bin over here uh, when we get ready to start potting things up. I have a seedling tray with a humidity dome. This is something you can get off Amazon. I bought these pretty recently for transplanting anthurium seedlings. I've seen them in TC videos all over the place. These are pretty cool. They've got these seedling 
inserts. This plastic insert here has got holes on the bottom so you can drain out the bottom. It sits pretty close to the floor of this container here. So you've got the tray at the bottom. So you could technically bottom water in there. Uh, and then it's got this humidity dome, which is, I think the, the best part of this is that it's actually got the, the twisty holes on the top. So you can cover up the, the holes if you feel like it or you can leave them open. So that is really neat for the price I paid. It was definitely, it was like $25 ish for 10, which is a great deal. So kind of like running in the two, 250, depending on where you get this from per, which is pretty neat. Other than that, I've got, uh, this is for the Monstera and for the Caramel Marble. These are um, parfait containers. If you haven't watched my semi-hydro gear guide video, which is published on this channel pretty recently, I do talk about these in that video, but I didn't have any on hand at the time. So they're linked in the description of that video. There's lots of other good stuff in that video. So I suggest if you've got an hour to kill, go through there. I do lots of semi-hydro gear, accessories, all the fun stuff. I'll drop a card above over here if you want to go check that out. So I have a bunch of those parfait containers. I'm only going to use the two of them for this project. The rest are going to go into the seedling tray. Finally, I've got tools. Here is 99% isopropyl alcohol. This is what I'm using to clean off my various tools. I've got these all in here. Here They've all been sitting here for a while already. I gave each one an individual rinse. Got some tweezers. I've got some spoons, measuring devices, snips. I'm going to take this stuff out now. A pair of cuticle scissors, which is really sharp and tiny, useful for chopping very tiny plants. Also, this guy's a cuticle pusher, which I had no idea what this was until I bought that set together. And again, this is dirt cheap. Like I paid less than $15 for both of these together. Cuticle pusher, super, super handy for uh, moving things around very carefully and for scraping things. Like if you've got an alocasia corm or you've got an anthurium stump that has some bark on it, you can use this kind of like if you're using a dab tool or something like that. It's got a blunt, rounded edge on there. You can use it to scrape off bits of bark, things like that. And you know, just to kind of seat things inside of the seedling containers, I've, I've done that before and it's very handy. So I've been using that tool pretty consistently since I got it. Tweezers, these are rubberized tweezers with a little bend at the end. This is pretty handy. It's kind of like uh, mini forceps. It, it definitely does the job for what you're trying to do. So I'm just popping these on my little napkin over here. And some spoons for mixing stuff. Um, I'm gonna use this a little bit later. Don't need it just yet. And this is just a measuring spoon that I'm going to use for measuring out my fungicide. And I've also got hydrogen peroxide 3% sitting here. I'm going to use this as a hydrogen peroxide bath for the plants as I'm moving them between stations. And then I've got Safer's sulfur dust, which I don't know if you can get this outside of Canada, but Safer's is a pretty common brand in Canada for things like miticide, fungicide. They have Endol, which is good for thrips or sort of good for thrips. Um, and stuff like that, spider mites. So I'm gonna use this, this is the fungicide. I'm gonna combine that with this guy here, which is General Hydro Rapid Start. I use this for my hydro plants. Since I have it handy and it's liquid, I can mix these guys together in the same batch. So this is a rooting hormone. I will mix these together and use that as a dunk right before I pot these plants up. Finally, I've just got water with a little bit of Super Thrive in it. Uh, that's to water the plants in after the fact. It has a little bit of Schultz, I think. Concentrate fertilizer in here as well. It's like really light uh, concentration. And then I have a little bit of leftover perlite and tree fern fiber that I will use probably for the caramel marble, just because I don't think I necessarily have enough of the stratum and perlite handy already mixed. And just because I want to use up the leftovers. And since it's not coming straight out of the flask, then I think it's probably easier to transfer. Plus it was already in sphagnum moss. So going to tree fern should be pretty painless, I think. So. Finally, I have over here, which you can kind of see behind me, I have two containers full of room temperature-ish warm water, room temperature water. Uh, that is gonna be used for something to take the plants out of the flasks here and clean off the agar inside of the first bucket. The second one is gonna be for mixing in the sulfur powder and rapid start uh, rooting hormone combo. And in between that step, I will be using the hydrogen peroxide to give them a quick rinse. Be careful not to kill things in there, so hopefully things will work out well. So I think I'm gonna move the camera over here so you guys can see what I'm doing. I'll aim it down and hopefully that'll be a decent enough angle that you can see what I'm working on as I talk through the process. So goodbye and I'll see you on the other side. So I've got my warm water here, got my disposal area here, and I got a paper towel up here to uh, to put the plants down while I'm, while I'm working on them. So start off here, this is the Monstera Mint. It is, like I said, looking worse for wear. I really hope I can salvage something out of here. So here goes nothing. I am opening up the container. 
Okay. And since I'm going to dispose of this afterwards, I'm going to be a little bit uh, more rough with this and just kind of cut the entire bag open. Spare myself the anguish of any further damage. And as I mentioned, I have sterilized my tools before starting here. I'm gonna peel this guy open. And I'm going to use my tweezers to grab him out of here. Okay, he's definitely not in the greatest condition, but you know what, we'll see. I'm gonna grab my other tweezers. So there's, there's definitely one leaf that's completely gone here. So let's see what kind of condition we're talking about. Can I separate these guys? You know, I think it's probably best if I dunk these first. So I'm gonna take these guys and dunk them in the water and see if I can separate things that way. Yeah, even that leaf that's in still okay condition is starting to brown a bit. I'm probably gonna have to take off part of it. Worst comes to worst here, I'm gonna snip off the others. There is one root that looks like it's still okay. Uh, there's one root there, you can see that guy. And we'll see, I'm just gonna let it soak in here a little bit. There's quite a bit of debris coming off. I'm going to use my cuticle snips. I'm going to snip off the dead leaf. Stem still looks good on that last leaf. I'm going to be very careful here and snip off the one dead leaf. That's good. We're good. All right. And now I'm going to take off this other dead piece. This one, I think, probably needs slightly larger snips for it. So I'm going to use these snips. All right. So what I got left here has probably seen better days as well. It's definitely not ideal. It has some leaf damage already. And I'm not sure if it's worth taking that brown part off. I think I'm gonna leave it for the time being and see if it gets progressively worse or not. So I'll give this guy another soak here. Then I'm gonna put him here to dry out for a moment. So that's number one. All right, so I've moved things around here. My tray of death over here is gonna be on the side. So I'll keep that for dead stuff out of the way. I've got my water here. So this is just room temperature water. And this right here is going to be my hydrogen peroxide mixture. So what I'm doing here is, uh, this is 3% hydrogen peroxide, as you can see, 3%. And I'm mixing this one part hydrogen peroxide to two parts water. I don't really wanna overdo it here. So I'm gonna use this just as a dunk for a minute or two for each plant. So after taking this guy out of its container, I'm gonna give it a little bit of a soak in my hydrogen peroxide bath here. Hopefully kill anything that was on it while it was uh, hanging out. I don't want it to sit too long in here. Take it out maybe like 15, 20 seconds total. Okay, and I'm gonna pop them down here out of the way. All right, now we're gonna go to the second plant. I'm gonna start with the moldy ones here or the mildewy ones. See what kind of condition these guys are in. So I'm taking the flask, opening the flask. Well, that was a lot easier than I expected. So why don't I quickly show you what these guys look like inside. Open this is in focus. You can see there's some white fungusy type of mildew growing on there right now. This could be any number of things, but I'm going to actually fill this guy up with some warm water. I've heard that's the easiest way of getting these guys out and getting the agar off. And I'm gonna do the same thing with all four of these. So I'm just gonna open each one of these for you so you can see what they look like one by one. That one had a little bit of pressure when I opened it up. Also a little bit on the fuzzy mildew side there. Interesting. Definitely has a bit of an alcohol smell to it. So clearly something got in there. This guy looking pretty good. That one looks nice. Hopefully you can see this okay. Looking quite healthy. This is number four. This one does not look great at all. I have no idea what's going on. Oh, there's, there it is. Oh, you know what? This one's kind of smooshed up against the edge in a couple of different spots. We'll see what kind of condition it's in when it comes out, but it looks like it's really underneath the agar. So it'll be interesting to see when it pulls out of there if it looks any better than it does currently. And finally, this one's the best looking of the bunch. Uh, it does have a couple of little yellow leaves at the bottom, but that's okay. All the top ones look great. I will put some warm water into all these flasks here, and then I'm gonna empty them out one by one. All right, so I've gone ahead and I've filled up the containers with room temperature water. So I heard that was an easy way to get some of these guys out, and they're already kind of popping out, which is a good sign. And interestingly enough, this one that didn't have any mildew, but the leaves were kind of smushed into the, the agar is the one that probably looks the worst. So I may be in, in luck here. We'll see how these guys are looking afterwards. I fill those up pretty much to the top with lukewarm water. I'll let them sit in there for a moment, maybe a minute or so. All right, so while I'm waiting for those guys to soak for a minute, I may as well show you the, uh, the caramel marble. This is the already deflask caramel marble. You can see it's looking pretty sweet there. I've heard 
that these guys can multiply quite a bit when they're sitting in moss after being deflasked. I believe this is already like a clump of another clump of caramel marble. So I'm really hopeful that this is going to be something I can propagate reasonably easily once it gets a little bit bigger. I, I don't have it in me to propagate it this small, but I guess we'll see how things go. I'm pretty hopeful that this monster I meant is okay. I mean, the actual stem looks all right, and there is white on the root there. So I'm assuming that the plant is okay. I do see some, like, looks like kind of the, the pregnant stem there as well. So I'm hoping that this will continue to grow. For the time being, I'll just let them sit here and dry off a moment. I'm going to now take all of these guys out of their containers one by one and give them a little dunk in the water first. And then I'll pot them into the hydrogen peroxide and let them soak for a minute. And then I'll put them all on this paper here. So first things first here, Let's see if I can get this guy out without any trouble. Trying to do this as carefully as I can. Looks like he's popping up pretty good, which is nice. I'm hoping this is showing up on camera. There's one. Pop him in the water. That was pretty easy. I hope the rest of them are that easy. Number two. This is the one that looks the worst out of the bunch. So this is actually, interestingly enough, not the one that had mold growing on it, but uh, we'll see if it comes out reasonably easily. Oh yeah, this one's not looking too great. We'll see, he looks like he doesn't have a whole lot of juice left in him, but maybe the roots are still usable. It is working to get the agar off, but I feel like there's some rot going on there. It's definitely been soaked a little too long. You can see the leaves are all kind of yellowing. I'm not feeling it with that one. Let's go on to the next guy. I hope you can see what's in the bucket here pretty good. That looks good. Trying to do this without damaging the plant is incredibly hard. All right, there we go. That one's out. Next. And last but not least, this guy here. Okay, that one looks pretty good too. And that was one of the moldy ones. So I'm not really sure what this stuff is. Here, you guys can take a look at what I got out of there. I don't know if that's some sort of mold growing on there. Fungus of some kind. I'll pop it back in here, get it out of the way. All right, so now I've got all four of my plants sitting in here. This one looks like it's got a couple of leaves that are probably gonna go. This one here looks decent. This one is the one that I, uh, it actually has roots though. I can see the roots. That's interesting. We'll see how that one works out. I'm not, not thinking that this one's gonna survive. It's got very, very fine roots. Um, and then the other ones all look like they're okay. So these guys have been soaking in the water a little bit here. I'm gonna take a look and make sure I get all the agar off because since the agar contains some sugar, it attracts bacteria and fungal growth pretty good. This one's still got quite a bit of agar on it and so does this one. So I may have to pluck at these guys uh, a little bit by hand to get the goop off. These ones are looking okay. I think I'm gonna take these out first since they're in better condition. I've heard some experiences folks have had with TC plants and having like a 20 to 30% loss rate that doesn't sound too hot to me i hope that uh, i mean considering i'm looking at five plants and at least one of them is not in very good shape here and that looks pretty yellow considering that i'm probably already down 20 percent uh, just out of those five you know and who knows what happens with this monstera but we'll see i really hope that i have slightly better luck than with the rest of them so i'm going to pop these guys out one by one these guys are really really tiny i've got a toothbrush here i'm going to use if i can just to kind of brush off any bits of agar i can see left over i do see some on the stem here i'm trying not to smush these too bad but i'm going to take a look here and see if i can get some of this agar off and you do want to try and clean these off as much as you can you also want to take off any dead leaves that you can at the bottom first i'm trying not to squeeze here i'm just kind of letting it rest on my tweezers so i'm going to give this guy first off a quick dunk i don't know if you can see that right there there's a little growth point right in the middle so we have these guys a dunk for about 20 30 seconds each in the hydrogen peroxide solution God, this is like playing a game of whack-a-mole i've heard there's like a bit of callus on here that can be on there i'm not sure if this is callus or just black roots or gunk from the agar i don't really want to mess with it too much i try and give it a little bit of a brushing with the peroxide mixture here see if it comes off doesn't seem to be coming off so i think that that one's already pretty good so i'm gonna take that one in put that one in there take this one out that one also has a couple of leaves that don't look too hot so this guy is about as good as it gets there i think he's got a leaf that's probably going to come off give this guy 20 odd seconds this one looks pretty good but he's got a lot of agar this one looks pretty bad i think this one's probably on the way out looks kind of dead i don't see any agar in there and the other two have quite a bit of agar left which is going to be a bit of a challenge to get out of here so let's start off with this one there we go looks like 
looks like I got the agar mostly off of this one. So just a little bit left at the bottom. Same with this guy. I think he's pretty much clean. This one also has a growth point in the center, which is good. See if I can get the tail end of the agar off here. Pull it off with my other tweezers. Let's give this guy a soak. 20 seconds also. And last but not least, this guy who looks pretty healthy. I'm really trying not to squeeze too hard when I'm holding these guys so they're a little slippery. Okay, this one's got a good root. This one has a brand new leaf there. You can see that. That guy's been soaking in here for a minute. Let's take him out. Let's give this guy a little bit of a soak as well. So, I mean, based on what I'm seeing here, two of these don't look too great. This one's, I mean, it's got some black on the roots. We'll see if that's just cooked or what. This one I'm not feeling great about at all. So there's my Monstera Mint. This guy looks fine. This guy looks fine. This guy pretty much looks fine too. Although I think they've been in the water for a little too long. Okay, and this one seen better days. This one definitely seen better days. So we'll see. I see like, you know, at least three of them that look okay here. So and there's like the leftover of the, uh, the agar and various bits of, of gunk that were in there. This is going to be my sulfur dust and rapid start solution. I'm actually going to give these guys a little dunk to clean them off before we start doing that because I've heard that these things can react together. Give this guy a little soak, rinse off any peroxide that's in there. That's one, two, This guy looks pretty healthy, we will see. It's funny, at the end of this, I feel like I may have different plants surviving than I expected. Okay, and then last but not least, this guy is quite healthy looking. So he's got one leaf that's not the greatest. All right, he's got roots. I think he'll be all right. Okay, and out you go. Okay, let's get rid of this. All right, so let those guys sit here. This is just one liter of room temperature water. So for one liter, the rapid start here, this is rapid start. If you've never used it before, it works with semi-hydro, but you can use it for this kind of solution as well. It tells me one quarter mil per liter for normal usage and then for aggressive usage, which I think I'm gonna go with for this, uh, one half mil per liter. Uh, I typically use somewhere between the normal and an aggressive for my household semi-hydro nutrients. So I think this time I'm gonna go with um, one half mil since this is one liter. Now, this is the, the moment of truth. This thing is always such a pain in the ass to get off of here. Ah, there we go. For once, did not spray me when I opened it. I've already given this a bit of a shake. I'm gonna grab my syringe. I'm gonna pull up one half mil of the rapid start, just making sure that my syringe is in the right place because my bottle's starting to get a little low. Okay, that's one half mil. And I'm gonna grab a bit more and disinfect this ahead of time just to be safe, sterilized it. Okay, that's out of the way. I believe for the sulfur dust, so this is the Safer's sulfur dust. For each liter of water, I want one tablespoon full, which is 15 mils. I happen to have a 15 mil, one tablespoon scoop here. I don't know why they make a box this big, to be honest. Like, it's pretty funny, actually. It's like the box is much larger than the actual amount of dust inside. I've like barely touched this bottle and it's like less than half full. That's one tablespoon of sulfur dust. I'm gonna move this aside. Get this out of the way. If you are interested in any of these products, I will link them in the description below. This water does not look very tasty. So I'm gonna soak each of these plants in here and then toss this. So the sulfur dust is a fungicide and miticide. This really does not look very appetizing, but I'm not drinking it. Got a liter of this mixed together. I'll give it, you know, 15, 20 seconds of mixing. So I'm gonna set this aside for a second here while I prep my media and my seedling tray. So I'm gonna be putting all five of the philodendron red andersons into the seedling tray here. I'd really think this one's gonna die pretty quick and this one's probably not far behind. And then I'm going to pop my Monstera into my little parfait cup container over here. First things first, I'm going to mix my substrates up. Now I've got my unmixed perlite at the bottom, fluval stratum at the top. I'm gonna give this a stir up. So I've got my fluval and perlite mixed together. If you're not familiar with fluval stratum, it is a volcanic soil that I believe is mined from the foothills of a volcano in Japan. I think it's Mount Aso. That's what's on the bag. It's very heavily used in aquariums. It's an aquarium soil. People tend to use this for tropical plants as well. And it seems to be really good as a starting medium. I would say that 
it is way too expensive to use on a regular basis for anything other than, you know, TC or seedlings or that sort of thing where if you're really into it, I use this very sparingly. I've heard it referred to as black gold or black treasure or something like that. I honestly, uh, my experience with it was pretty limited, so I will see how it goes with these guys and then I'll judge based off of that. Right now, I can see for a fact that this plant is not looking too hot and neither is this one, so we'll see once they've gotten into some soil and they're looking a little better. So let's get the uh, the seedling tray organized. So the combination in here. So I'll fast forward this so you guys don't have to watch the entire thing. So you can see this stuff kind of looks like pellets. It's very small. It actually reminds me a little bit of kind of tiny rodent poop. Pretty sure it's not supposed to look like that, but you know, that's what it brings to mind. So I'm just putting enough in each of these five cells to have a base layer. Eventually, once I see rooting happening, I will move these plants out of these containers into individual containers, but for the time being, they'll be in this one setup. I'm gonna grab each one of these. I'm gonna dunk it into the rooting hormone combined with the fungicide for a moment and take it back out again. So let's go and do these guys one by one. of the red andersons here soak that guy problem is if i drop this i'm not gonna be able to find it again okay and finally the monstera which is pretty firm i gotta say like that it feels firm so i'm hoping it's just the leaves that were gone and that the uh the stem is good enough to to plant up so i'm gonna put this guy he'll be getting his own container shortly and that last leaf you know it's looked better but you know like i said the the stem is good enough so hopefully this is all right i'll move this out of the way let's pot up the monster first so i'm gonna grab my container here i'm gonna fill this guy up hopefully you can see what i'm doing i'm putting kind of a base layer of stratum at the bottom the stratum and perlite that looks pretty decent. I want to have enough room for it to grow and also that I can see the roots. So I'll put a little bit more, I think, because Monsteras tend to have pretty huge roots. And I'm being really optimistic here that it's going to come back to life. I use my uh, dab tool slash cuticle pusher to make a little indentation in the center here. I'm going to pick up my Monstera mint and I'm going to put him down right in the middle. He does have one nice root there. I'm going to use the dab tool to kind of seed him a little bit better. Okay, and then I'm going to put a little bit more of the medium around the top here. Now I don't want to have any contact with leaves with this substrate. Probably gonna pull him out a little bit just to give him some height in here. He's already pretty well buried. And we don't want the uh, the crown of the plant too buried in there. You guys can see that guy. He's in there, he's got the one kind of deadish, half dead leaf. I'm hoping that it's just a variegated piece that's browned off, but I think it's probably from the damp as well. And I'm going to water this one in just very slightly. So I'll give it a little bit of water, just enough to moisten the substrate without it being super wet. So that was like a couple of mils on the outside. Just enough that you can see some moisture on the sides here, and that's it. You definitely don't want the roots submerged, and you definitely don't want it to be soaking, so that's good. So now I'm gonna pop the lid on here. Oh, that one came on pretty easily, so there we go. So there's my Monstera Mint. I will label that guy up and put him aside. I'm connecting my label printer here, so you can see here. If you watch my other video with the Semi Hydro Gear Guide, I've got, this thing is featured towards the end. I've got a uh, Monstera Deliciosa Mint label that I'm about to print here. Let's print this guy out. Pop that onto here. Nicely labeled. And this guy is gonna go on a heat mat next to all of my baby anthurium seedlings. All right, so there's not a huge amount of roots on these Red Andersons, so I'm gonna keep the two that are in bad condition kind of off to the side, and I'll put the three that look good together. What I wanna do here is take off the bottom leaf because it looks like it's gonna get covered up by substrate. So I'm gonna take this white little tiny bottom leaf off. So I think this one looks okay. I'm going to pot him up. Now he's got a pretty good chunk of stem there. I'm going to pot this guy into the substrate. He is the nicest or second nicest of the bunch. So let's pop him in here. So what I'm trying to avoid is having the plant sitting on the edge of the plastic here. I want it to be kind of above the plastic level. So I'm going to now make a little divot in each one right up to the top here. So let's try it with this guy since he's got the best roots so far. Okay, and let's pop him in here. I'm trying to make sure that the leaves don't get in contact too much with the substrate. It is pretty close. These are very tiny plants, but we'll see. 
So we'll top them off a little bit more on this side. Kind of backfill. Let's do the same with all the other ones. It is pretty sketchy. These are pretty hard to place because they're so curly. This is pretty hard to get in there so it's actually seated correctly. Hopefully once I water it in and it's sat here for a little bit, it's a bit better. All right, next. So he's got a pretty good stem. These guys are so kind of clumped up that there is very little space to put the actual stem in substrate. So for this guy, there's one leaf at the bottom here that's kind of in the way. It does have a growth point, which is a good sign. I'm really hoping that these guys will make enough contact with the substrate that they're not just sitting dry in here. This one's actually got variegation already, which is pretty cool. These are so tiny that it's really difficult to position them correctly. And some of the leaves are kind of flipped upside down, which is also a bit of a problem. I'm hoping that it'll kind of naturally adjust itself. We'll see. I'm not feeling too hot about this one here. It's also turned a bit sideways. I think I'll have to twist this guy just because he's going to be running into the lid of the humidity dome otherwise. He's also got one leaf down at the bottom here, which is really problematic. So I'm actually going to take that off if I can reach it. I had to rinse this guy off again. Took off the bottom leaf, the one that was over here. I'm going to try this again. Good shape with that guy. I think I'm just gonna leave him alone. It's tough. The roots are so shallow on these guys that it's really difficult to see what you're doing. So hopefully that works out. Two more to go here. Let's see. This one I am not feeling it, but he does have roots, so the leaves don't look good, but the roots don't look too terrible. Good. Okay, last but not least. Now this is the one that really doesn't look that hot, but we'll see. Hopefully it's not as bad as it looks. Oh, you know, now that it's dried off a little bit, it could be, I mean, it's still pretty shitty, but it does have roots. So let's see what happens with the roots. All right, so last but not least, even though he does have roots, I don't know if the roots are any good, but I guess we'll see when he gets in there. I don't have high hopes for this guy at all, but I'm gonna give him a chance to see if maybe he comes back from it. expect that this one has a good chance of some sort of rot kicking in, but I think we're in pretty good shape here. So now I'm going to water these guys in. Yeah, as soon as they dry off, they definitely seem to get a little bit less floppy, which is good to see. So I just kind of want to dampen all of the substrate and then I will ditch the extra from the bottom. Just kind of want to see it running through. So I'll show you guys. You can see that it's kind of running right through. The stratum's looking like it's damp across the board. Consistently make sure that there's moisture in there. You don't want to be soaking wet. And I'll let it drain for a minute. And while that's happening, I'm gonna take a look at the caramel marble. So this guy, I do have quite a bit of the stratum, so I'm tempted to use that instead of the tree fern perlite combo that I've got going on. So I'm gonna pull this out by the hilariously long sphagnum moss. Wow, look at that. Comes right out. Okay, I've got a lid here. I can use this as a, a staging ground. I'm gonna try and pull off this moss. I'm not a huge fan of moss. I use moss for cuttings. I use moss for imports, but man, it's really in there, I gotta say. Plus, I mean, this moss is like grown. <laughs> it's, it's come back to life which is interesting. I don't feel a whole lot of roots on here. I know if the caramel marble is anything like my um, like my ring of fire, the roots are pretty shallow on there, if there are any to be had. Is there even a root? This is pretty much all moss. There's really not a whole lot of plant in there. I'm tempted to start pulling at this with the tweezers. Man, if there are roots on here, they are so small that it's like impossible to see. There's one, I think. Yeah, that looks like a root. I think A, I probably should have just left it in there at this point, and now I'm gonna regret this. B, the roots are so small. Yeah, I can see the roots now, and they are tiny, tiny, like filaments. That might have actually been a root there. It's kind of reddish. Yeah, that looks like a bit of root that came off. So I don't know if I wanna risk blowing the rest of this moss off. All right, the rest of this guy looks pretty good. Oops. Oh, that was a piece of plant that came off. I'm gonna tuck that back in there. <laughs> that was probably a mistake. So we'll see, I'm, I may, I have, this might be a small enough plant that it's 
actually got a root on it, does it? I'll plop it in there and see what happens. But I think we've got enough now that I'm not gonna mess with this any further. I'm just gonna pot it straight up. Hang on, give it a dunk in first my rooting hormone bath here. See if I can help it along a little bit. Okay, and then this guy, I honestly don't think this is anything to write home about, but I think it's probably as best it gets. I honestly don't even know if that's a usable piece of plant or not. But these little plantlets are so small that I'm not gonna risk it. I will just pop it in the substrate besides everything else. So, you know what, I'm, I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna use the same substrate here as for my Monstera and the others, and I'm going to fill this up to, let's say, the same level approximately. Okay, make a divot like I did with the rest. This guy, I think, is going to be fine. His roots are so tiny and fine, though, that I don't really want to mess with them too much more. Let's pop this guy in here. Make sure the roots are covered. Making a little bit of a mound around him so he doesn't have bits and pieces kind of dragging out. Okay, and I'm going to take this ridiculously small piece and see if this is still salvageable. Who knows? Maybe something will happen. Stranger things have happened. So everything's in. All right, now let's water this guy in a bit. I'll try to be careful not to water directly onto it. You just kind of want enough water that you can see like moisture at the bottom of the flue. I'm not sure if that's visible on camera, but I see some darkening at the bottom there. Don't want it to be soaked, just want it to be moist. There you go. So you can see the moisture is kind of right around here. That line there right where the bottom of the curve is. I'll let this guy sit, see if something happens. Looking forward to experimenting. These lids are no joke. This is ridiculous. Are you fucking kidding me? There we go. Okay. Whew, that was no fun. This one I've got a label here already and I will plug that on top. Labeled, there we go. And there it is in its new home. Hopefully this guy does okay too. So now these guys are watered in, they've dripped through. I'm going to drain this out. Let's pop it down here, drain this. Get rid of it. Okay, and the rest of this I can just leave in. It's not gonna hurt anything. There we go, this is our seedling tray. And we've got everybody in there housed up nicely. These two guys, I really have no idea what's gonna happen. This one in particular is looking pretty damp. This one might still dry out a teensy bit, we'll see. And then these three look really good. So my guess right now, based off what I'm seeing, is that these three will probably be okay and these two are gonna die. But we'll check back in uh, you know, a month or two and see how things are going. So let's flip back to the old regular cam. All right, so I'm back. I've got everything potted up. I have my mint Monstera here that hopefully will do okay. I have my philodendron caramel marble that was already doing okay and had been deflast. So this is more of just a transplant, but considering how small this guy was, it's just as risky. Then I've got my five philodendron red Andersons here that, I mean, we'll see, we'll see how this goes. I'm gonna keep a close eye on them. We'll see once the leaves dry off because I think the, this one in particular is looking pretty damp and that's not a good sign. The rest of these look all right and I think they just need to kind of straighten out a bit. So I'll let those go. They're sitting in their fluval, Perlite 50-50 mix. Leave the humidity controls closed. And that's all she wrote. So thank you for being here with me today. Again, I am Nick from Propis. If you enjoy this kind of planty content or you know experimental planty content, please do drop a like for the video below. It helps with the algorithm and subscribe if you want to see more of this. I have a whole bunch more videos on the way. I have one with a bunch of baby anthuriums that should be up pretty soon as well. I would love to see some questions in the comments below if you would like me to film anything specific. So thank you again for being here and I will see you in the next one.